live tennis activity going on right now. Ted. All right, Chris, this is court 11, one of the outer show courts. Jonas Bjorkman, Greg Rusetsky in a third set tie break, and Rusetsky has taken the first two sets. Now Bjorkman serving at 4-5 in this tie break. Ooh. Uh, so Pat Cash, how do you like being a commentator now? <laughs> I've been here all day, mate. It's been <laughs> fantastic. I've been riveted to these matches. Yes. I've, I've seen some fantastic matches, though. Of course. This been, and but this is a challenge for Pat, because until recently you were working with Rusetsky. I was. I've been, uh, well, Greg was on the, on the verge of retiring. I had to get his game back together, get a physio working with him full time, fix his technique with my old coach. And he's been going from strength to strength. And this is a, this is a repeat of the semi-final in 1997, where Rosetsky beat Jonas Bjorkman. Bjorkman was red Six hot four. back Bjorkman. in 97. And uh, with a ranking of number four in the world. And uh, Rosetsky is a bit more consistent. So he was in real trouble last year. Well, that serve, you can, you're always in a match. Six all. Saving at set point. And that is one heck of a serve that Greg Rosetsky has. Certainly fixed his, uh, fixed his body. He says, I'm, I'm happy. I haven't, haven't, haven't had to visit my physio or my doctor at all, apart from socially, for a year. And uh, certainly December last year when he came to me, he said, I can't even get in the court. I said, look, that's the first thing. Let's get you fit and work on the technique, which is, goes hand in hand. If you've got something that's wrong with your technique, it's only going to put more stress on that certain part of your body. So he wants to close this out. Straight sets if you can. Oh, what a lob. That's a better luck for you. Rosetsky not too happy. I mean, he's 7-6. Bjorkman. Not much he can do, really, with a serve like that. Bjorkman stuck his racket out. And just an absolute perfect lob. I'm sure he'd like to claim that it, he, he meant that one, but I don't think he's <laughs> going to get that one. But here he is uh, serving to bring it to the fourth set. Oh, oh Rosetsky will pay back. Well, that's, if you're going to give him a, a ground stroke, it better be the backhand. This is forehand. He's got a very Seven solid all. forehand. Developed that into a weapon this year. He still struggles a lot with the backhand return, but he, he'll just chip it back, get the ball back in play, and work from there. Oh, that's a great volley. And Bjorkman is a 29-year-old. He's been on the circuit for a long Eight, seven, time. Bjorkman. Standard play out the Rosetsky backhand. He knows he's not going to get too hurt with it. But what can he do? He's set point again. Let. First serve. He's got to hope to get his racket on the ball, first of all. What a good serve. Eight all. And Bjorkman stands in a long way inside the baseline, a bit like Andre Agassi, but the idea is to cut the angles down. And that's what can happen if he gets his racket on the ball. He takes it in early. By the time the ball gets to the opponent, Bjorkman is right in the middle of the court. Ready to knock the volley off. 9-8, Bjorkman. So another set point for Bjorkman. Yeah. And there's... Now, you didn't teach him that move, did you? <laughs> he might have learned it from me somewhere along the line. <laughs> Not for recent years. Brusetsky had gotten it. I let that racket fly. Bjorkman... It looks like he's taking a little loo break. 
So Bjorkman and Rusetsky are going to play on. That's out on court 11. A fabulous show court out on the grounds. Uh, right here, right on our stage, Boris Becker. Jonas Bjorkman doing Boris Becker. Right here. <laughs> Got the ball bounced down. Oh, that was beautiful. I want you to do McEnroe. But see, even if you can't do McEnroe, I know you're a righty. I want you to give it a shot because John's in his hotel room, probably watching her at home, and he, he needs the tips. All right. Should I have it on? Oh, should I try lefty or right? Right. Let's, let's try lefty. Okay. Let's try lefty. All right. Right here. On our court, all the way from Sweden. <laughs> it's like, quiet down! Very good. <laughs> that was beautiful. Jonas Bjorkman, he's, head he's headlining at the comedy club later tonight. Yorkman has become renowned around the world now. The BBC ran the same piece. They got him to do the same thing at Wimbledon this year, and they must have run that 50 times during the two weeks. Yeah, he just missed a, one thing. He's with these uh, McEnroe wipes. He's he's forward with these with these sleeves. <laughs> There's only one thing. Well, well there's very, very good. And he hit it left-handed well, too. And he hit the serve. I was going to say the only thing that was missing was he doesn't do pad cash. Uh, no, nobody can do that one. It's just too confusing. <laughs> so Bjorkman's obviously uh, strapping his knee. Got a bit of tendonitis. It's a very common strap that they put on the knee. And uh, Rosetsky's taking a break. And Bjorkman took the first break. Now Rosetsky is on one himself. So while play waits on court 11 and uh, Everybody from the night crowd filling in, and I know that there are just one or two sneaky New Yorkers trying to stay from the day session right here on Ash Stadium. Pete Sampras getting some practice time in, which again indicates they're going to need some time to turn this crowd over, and it'll be a little bit before we see Venus Williams on court to begin the night program. Well, I suppose that, yeah, it takes them a while to get the crowd out, then to get the next crowd in, and meanwhile, Pete's starting to sneak, sneak on, get a hit on the court. He didn't want to go on the outside courts. Instead, preferring to hit on the center court. Some players are fussy like that. Others don't really mind. Now live on court 11, where Rusetsky and Bjorkman have resumed after their break between sets three and four. Bjorkman holding, and now Rusetsky serving at 30 all. Well, Bjorkman's got the good jump straight away in the fourth set. That's 30, 40. It's unusual for one player to go off for a toilet break very quickly, and then another one come back, and then the next one guy deciding whether it's a tactic from Rusetsky to. Break up Bjorkman's timing. Give or, a good or, five or six minutes. Or are the lose out there just one at a time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got the break. Mm -hmm. So some light for Bjorkman. Rzeski still fuming. Threw his racket after the third set tiebreaker. Bjorkman leads look how, to look how far inside the baseline Bjorkman is. A lot like Agassi. He doesn't like the idea of Rosetsky, tall guy, six foot four, fantastic power, and gets a lot of angle. Doesn't like the idea of being dr drawn right out of court. Bjorkman now 29, and he has been on the tour a long time, and at one point, and it was the point that Pat alluded to earlier, ranked number four in the world. Oh, that's a fantastic couple of pickups there from Rosetsky. It's a long way from a guy who 
couldn't play more than two matches in a row at the end of the last year without breaking down and having to default. It's great lunges. He's a good athlete. A little bit slow, but what's in question is not his ability, I think is his endurance day after day. Was there one when you started with him, Pat, was there one injury in particular or one part where he was really hurting? Well, he's, he actually had a, a bad toe, a bad back, and a bad neck, which are all kind of related to his serve, which was, which was you know, having a lot of problems. Very inconsistent. Still got quite a bit of power. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's a great forehand. Too much room there. Not good enough approach shot from Bjorkman. But these injuries, 15, 30. generally speaking, injuries... Uh, created by some poor technical error that's putting stress on the body. If the body is hitting, moving perfectly well, it won't be stressed, even though it's out there for hours on end. It won't break down, it will recuperate. But uh, Ag uh, Rosetsky's ball toss was off to one side, putting a lot of stress on his toe and his back. Now that's a shot that he's... Uh, He's not going to make too often. Off. It's clearly one of his weaknesses. The players know it. Backhand passing shot. Backhand return. He can consistently slice back into play. But he gets in trouble on the grass at Wimbledon. Believe, believe it or not, even though he has his big serve. And he's had his best results here on, the, on a hard court where the ball bounces up. He has to get down low on that backhand. He's in some trouble. Oh. Well, three-time Grand Slam winner, Bjorkman. He knows how to hit the angle volley. Doubles winner, what do you think? I say. He certainly knows that's a sort of typical double shot there. He's won his three titles, all being Australian Open titles. Three different players, Elting, Raft and Woodbridge. So he's, uh, <laughs> doesn't matter who he plays with. He's been in the final of the French Open with Jan Appel, the other Swedish guy. Dan Gilman, long there from Rusetsky, showing frustration, three love. For Bjorkman in the fourth set. Back live at the U.S. Open, we're awaiting the beginning of the night program inside Arthur Ashe Stadium. But of course, there are all kinds of matches taking place around the grounds and on court 11. This a semifinal from four years ago here at the Open, a match which Greg Rusetsky came back from two sets to one down to win. Now, after dropping the third set. And falling behind a break in the fourth. Greg Rosetsky just, Pat, we were told the referee has just been summoned to court 11 because in his anger after losing that last game, Rosetsky slammed the ball and hit one of the ball people. Well, that is a defaultable. With the left hand oh, and the Well, I don't know if that's a... Uh, but certainly was not... I mean, look, only Greg Rosetsky cannot ultimately answer, but you certainly wouldn't assume that that was an intentional assault at the lines person. I, I think that's, I think it's very harsh. In actual yeah. fact, this could be harming Bjorkman. Bjorkman's in a good situation. He's won the third set. He's up a break. He wants to get out there and keep going. Absolutely. He doesn't want these breaks. You know, that's, so in a way, the umpire is actually a defaultable uh, incident. If you hit it at a ball boy in anger, I hit him on the fly. I would agree with you. I went to That is Dennis Overberg from Australia. He is the chair of fire. I think this is, uh, yeah, he's saying I hit it in the court. Right. I hit it, hit it in the court. I hit him on the thigh. It wasn't, a, you know, smack straight at a linesman. Well, it's, oh, I think this is, uh, well, yeah, I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway. Well, Pat, it may be, it may be harming Bjorkman from the momentum standpoint, but Greg looks mad. 
Well, Venus Williams is coming up. She'll be playing American Mylan 2, once a junior champ here at the U.S. Open. And then Venus will be followed on Arthur Ashe Stadium by Pete Sampras and his second round match against Andre Sa of Brazil. So that's the featured evening matches still to come here on USA. But we're in the good position of having tennis going on. Martina Navratilova is playing doubles right now. She's on the grandstand court, still awaiting the appearance of the uh, umpire. Well, Martina is doing well playing a Rancho Sanchez now, Vicario. Uh, Pat, I've got to, I've got to tell you something though. You want the update on court ten? Rainer Schudler has gone down. Rainer Schudler. I've been practicing that for days. <laughs> <laughs> That's your favorite name, and Rainer Schuler has gone down in the fifth set to Ramon Delgado, a qualifier. Here is our friend Brian Early, the tournament referee. Okay. Then I hit a ball, he hits a break point, hits a return. I hit the ball, hits the baseline, hits the line, Judge, and he gives me a point penalty for that, and it was okay. unintentional. I hit, it, I hit it in the court, and it hit Is that all the question is? Yeah. Because yeah. because I hit it I hit it I hit it in the court and then it hits him and it gives me a point penalty. No, I I I, I have to agree with it. You have to agree with yeah. it, even though I did no intention. No no no, I understand. It hits, it hits inside the court. Yeah. It's not hitting him on the fly and the guy's moving away. I'm not aiming for it. It hits the ground. Yeah, but it didn't hit him on the fly. But you, but you admit you hit it dangerously. I didn't hit it's it dangerously. I just hit it. Just, let's go. Okay, let's go. Rusensky trying to survive this point penalty. Started the game. Advantage Rusensky. Doing well to hang in there. He had a Jeez. backhand passing shot, point before, which he would have made. I think it's sitting down for a while at that time, but not done him any good. He's done well, really, to, to put this out of his mind. I don't think he'll. Uh, it'll take him quite a while to cool down. And he's played a lot of tennis. Experienced player. Done well. Leads three games to one. To hold on, Bjorklund still got the break. Three games to one. Jonas Bjorklund, an ex experienced player, there have been all those Grand Slam finals, winning three Grand Slam doubles, winning three finals. Sorry, two finals. So the five Grand Slam doubles titles 
championships he's been in the finals with five different players. Yeah. Tell me this guy's not a good doubles player. Generally means you can volley, you can serve, you're quick. And you're good at angles. Look at that. All the way at the back of the court. Zeski did the right thing coming in. And he had to had to hit the line there, otherwise six foot four Rosetsky would have been uh, all over that. Bjorkman started the year very well. He uh, watched him play an absolutely fantastic match against one of the Australian Open favourites. <laughs> They're trying to get... What is it? What sort of animals they have here? I don't know. They're... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Is that a grasshopper or... What do we call them? Cicadas in Australia. I don't know what you call them here. Zeski but doing what he knows best, trying to get into the net. Coming over that backhand. Usually likes to try and keep the ball low. Did that so well in 90, ooh, say 97. Got to the final here. Thirty fifteen. Pat Rafter's first. U.S. Open title. He, of course, he went back to back in 97 and 98. 97, Rosetsky in 98, Philippoussis. I mean, both of those in four sets. Bit of a surprise. That after it was then. Now, if somebody's trying to attack the, attack the net off your second serve, the most important thing is to do is to get the ball deep, close to the service line as possible. And good serving from Bjorkman, keeps the break, it's at 4-1 in the fourth set. Bjorkman leads four games to one. They'll have their warm-up, and now we go back to quarter 11, Pat Cash there as well with Greg Rusetsky, Jonas Bjorkman. Rusetsky had one four deuce. And he's struggling still. Bjorkman's clearly got his eye in. Rusetsky staying back now. It's always lovely to see a good serve volley like that starting to stay back. You know, as a returner, you're starting to dominate the match. And these guys have uh, got an interesting win loss record the last couple of years. Break point. Two more. Oh, he's missed it. That's the second real chance he's had to get out the double break now on this set. And you've just got to take those opportunities. Hey, Yorkman is about he's about 50-50 on uh, last year and this year as far as his win-loss record. Advantage Rosetsky. You know, Pat, you think about 97 when they met in the semis here. And Within two months after that semifinal meeting, they were each ranked number four in the world. Rosetsky in October, Bjorkman November, the highest rank for both men. But that's some achievement to reach four in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's no mean feat to get up there. So, Rosetsky saving Bjorkman leads that four games game. To two. York is still up a break at 4-2. How would you guess Pat Rosetsky's fitness level would be if this does go five? Is he prepared for that? Well, I think he can get through. He gets a lot of free points from his serve. I mean, I think Bjorkman would be certainly the, the fitter of the two. It's, uh, you know, you, you end up just fighting your way through a five-set match. You really do. Just grit your teeth, get through it. And once you've got through it, then you go with your physio. Is, friend of mine Ryan Kendrick who uh, Greg decided to employ full-time this year I think it's a good move let Ryan go to work on you mm -hmm. and worry about the next match later 
So I imagine that at your new tennis academy in the, on the Gold Coast in your homeland, there's going to be plenty of physios on hand, <laughs> right? You'll be stressing there is. fitness all the time. Absolutely. Well, I'm lucky that my partner, Gavin Hopper, is one of the all-time fit guys. He's coached Philip Hussis, Amanda Kurtzer, Monica Sellers, Alvin Washington. He knows them all. He's trained them all. Now, if you, personally, if I decide I'm going to sign up for a tennis academy, I'm coming there. <laughs> All right? The Gold Coast, I think you could sign me up. Yeah, of course. You visited down there, didn't you, this year, last year? In yes. The Olympics. Down that way. Mate, you're always welcome. And I won't jack the price up for you. <laughs> 40 to 15. Going out to that backhand again. Keeps the break. 5-2 Bjorkman in the fourth. Bjorkman leads five games to two.